Howdy folks, in this lesson we will be covering WAN termination points. Now before we start folks, if you haven't done it, please remember to give this video a like. And also, if you'd like to follow along with the course and know when the videos go live, also maybe consider subscribing. Alrighty, let's go learn. Alright, let's start by asking what is a WAN termination point? Because that's probably the question that's running through your mind at this point. Well folks, it's obviously got something to do with networks, which you might have guessed already since we're doing a networking course. <laughs> a WAN termination point is basically the point where your provider's network stops and where yours starts, if I have to give you the short version. Now, in most countries, if you have something like, for example, fiber, the provider would normally bring the fiber line up to more or less the outside of your house or more or less the outside of your office. They won't always bring it into your house or office. They will terminate it. That's the terminology we use. They will terminate the line outside your house or outside your office in a little box, which we refer to as a termination box. And then should you decide to go and get yourself fiber internet, then they'll come back and they will go and extend the line from this termination box into your office or into your residence. Now just to repeat myself, the point at your house or the office where they bring this line up to, you know, that little box, that is called the termination point. It's normally going to be a box of some kind, not always, it's not set in stone, but generally from what I've seen, it's a box of some kind. It's, there's not a specific way that it looks, but it's normally going to be a box. It's obviously waterproof because it's going to be outside in the weather and the rain and all that kinds of stuff. And then um, some of these boxes, you can only go and connect one fiber line to it. So in other words, one office or one residence. You do get some of these boxes that I've seen. It can actually go and connect two residences or four, perhaps. You know, It depends on the box they use and it depends on the layout of the land. Now, in most cases, you will find at the termination point, there's a little box of some kind which is waterproof, like I said. Now, like I said, folks, in most cases, you're going to find there's a little termination box. So where the point ends, it's going to be a box of some kind, and it's waterproof. So I'm just repeating myself here. This box is usually referred to as a termination box, which makes sense since it is what? The termination point. Now, if you or a client of yours eventually one day decides to get a fiber line installed in your house or your office, Someone would basically come out to your premises or this client's premises and they would go and take a line from that termination box and install it into your residence. That is going to cost you extra money in most cases. That's normally called splicing. So we basically go and fuse the fiber cables because they're made out of glass. So in case you guys don't know, we are going to cover that again later in this course. But if you didn't know, fiber cables are made out of glass. Very thin strands of plastic and glass and they use light to reflect, you know, inside these little glass tubes, and that's how data travels so fast and so far. Now, the person that normally comes out to your house or, or this office to come and splice this fiber line into the residence or the office, that person, in most cases you will find, normally works for the provider. The provider that owns the infrastructure in that respective area. It's not always going to be the same provider. So in my area where I live, there's about two providers that own infrastructure in this area. But if I drive a couple of kilometers or a couple of miles, you know, up the streets and stuff, it might be a different provider. So whoever owns the infrastructure in that area, they are normally the ones that will come and, you know, do the splicing. Uh, depending on how busy they are, you might see them actually contracting out to one another. You never know. Now, guys, a WAN termination point, in case you didn't know, is also commonly known as a demarcation point, or as some might call it, a demark for short. Yeah. So it's not just called a termination point. It is sometimes referred to as a demarcation point. Hopefully, I'm not butchering that name. Or in short, we just call it a demark. Now, in case anyone is wondering what this WAN termination point might look like, because I've been talking about it, but you have probably no idea what it looks like, here is a photo for you of which I took of my own WAN termination box outside my house. Now, like I said, this might vary from house to house, from business to business. 
Uh, this specific box can take up to, I think, either two houses or four houses. So it's only one cable connected to it at this point in time. But that's essentially what the termination box would look like. They'll bring it up to my wall. And if I decide to get myself fiber internet, which I did, then they will come to back to my house and they'll open that box and they'll splice it in from that box into my house. If you look at this photo very carefully, there are two PVC pipes coming out below this box, on that box. Now the pipe on the right has a fiber line in it. So the pipe is not the fiber line. The fiber line is in that pipe. So it's coming out from the right of that box. That is the fiber line coming from the provider in my respective area. Now the pipe on the left will usually be empty in the beginning until you or this customer decides to go and get themselves fiber and then this technician will come out to your residence or your office and they will install fiber into that pipeline into your house. Now, it, it actually looks quite complicated when they come out, but it's actually not that complicated. So if you're wondering how they get that fiber line into that PVC pipe, especially in cases where this pipe might be underground or up the walls, in the roofs and stuff, they actually blow it into the pipe with compressed air, believe it or not. Not really part of this lesson, but just in case you guys were wondering, very often we'll normally go and use compressed air. It's going to blow that fiber cable into that pipe. I kid you not. It's the coolest thing. And that's how we get it out the other side. Now, when I decided to go get myself fiber, the provider then obviously came out to my house. They opened that little termination box or demark box, whatever you want to call it, which is now also known as the WAN termination point or demarcation point, as some call it. Now, from that box, they spliced a fiber cable, which comes into my house. And obviously, they blew it with compressed air into the pipe. Now, on the inside of my building, which in this case is my house, the fiber cable normally connects to a little box, which is called an ONT. This is short for Optical Network Terminal. The device is actually also known as a CPE, which is short for Client Premises Equipment. Now, the provider normally provides you with this ONT device during the installation of the fiber line into your house or your office. It's a good idea to check beforehand where you want this device in your residence or your house because it can be a very expensive device to move. So once they install it in your house, you know, they're going to bring the fiber line into your house or into your business into a specific area. You need to tell them where you want this device placed, ideally near a power outlet because this device is going to need power. So make sure you, you're happy with where you're going to be having this device because once it's there, it's there. To move it's going to be quite expensive because they're going to have to go and resplice the cable. You don't want to do that. So once they install it in a specific place in the building, that's normally where it's going to stay. You should make sure the place you choose has power, like I said, nearby also. And it needs to be you know, preferably relatively central in the building. So this is your, your house, your residence. Ideally, you want to try and get this kind of sort of more or less central in your house because you're most likely going to have your router. You know, some people call it the router. You're probably going to have that nearby. And, you know, ideally you want that kind of device, you know, in the middle of your house in terms of wireless signal strength. Once you have the ONT all set up, you should see about three cables plugged into it. One is obviously going to be the power cable to provide the device with power. One cable will be the fiber line coming in from the outside from your termination box. The third cable will normally go from the ONT into your router. Now that third cable that goes from the ONT to your router, that can either be another fiber cable, a very short one. So then you'll find that the WAN port on your router will be a fiber port and the four extra ports will be LAN ports, you know, normal RJ45 ports. So it can be either or. I've seen it's, it's a 50-50. So it can either be a small little fiber cable or it can be a small little network cable, normal LAN cable if you want to call it that, that goes to your router's WAN port. Now, most of the ones I've seen is usually a normal network cable with an RJ45 connector. But like I said, could be a fiber cable. The network cable will have one end plugged into the ONT and the other end will be plugged into your router, into the WAN port. Now, in case you're curious how this device looks, I obviously have a photo here for you guys, but let's make it a little bit bigger. This is the ONT in my house. I censored some of the stuff on it with personal details, so that's that's the blank bar you see on it, but this should give you a good enough idea of what to expect. It won't necessarily look exactly like mine, but this is what it more or less would look like. So that's an example of an ONT. 
This specific ONT has a LAN cable, a normal Ethernet LAN cable that goes from it to the WAN port on my router, but it could have just as easily have been a fiber cable. You'll see in the photo there is three cables plugged into mine. The little black cable on the left behind the network cable is my fiber line coming in from the outside of my house from the termination box, which is the WAN termination point. The network cable on the left goes to my WAN port on my router. And then the third cable way on the right is obviously the power cable of the device. All right, folks, that's the main stuff you need to know when it comes to the topic of WAN termination point. I probably went way too far of all the stuff I mentioned in this video, went a little bit overboard. But either way, nonetheless, it is still network related and it's still stuff you need to know nonetheless. Very useful information in terms of your exam. Okay, so folks, to summarize, the WAN termination point in a nutshell is simply just the point where your provider's network stops and yours starts. It's usually going to be some form of box like the one in this photo, and this is usually also known as a termination box. You can think of this termination box or box as the boundary between the provider's network and your network or the client's network. Everything on the outside is the provider's network and basically their responsibility and problem. Everything on the other side is you or your client's responsibility or problem. Well, folks, that is all there is to it. Yes, really, I'm serious. Some of these topics might sound very complicated and difficult, but in reality, you'll notice very quickly that some of them are actually not that technical. It's not that complicated. It just seems complicated and difficult at times, but some of them are actually very straightforward. Now, this, for instance, is a lot easier and a lot simpler than it actually sounds, as you hopefully picked up in this video. Okay, folks, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson, and I hope you've learned something. Please give this video a like if you've learned something, if you've enjoyed it. Remember to subscribe if you haven't done so. And then, uh, before we all disappear, guys, just a shout out to the guys that sponsor this channel. Thank you everybody that supports the channel so I can make more content like this. If you guys would like to do that as well, you can find out information in the video description down below. So thank you guys. Uh, here's a bit of a list of the Patreon sponsors of the channel. Thank you very much guys. I appreciate you. Here's a list of the PayPal sponsors. Thank you very much guys. Appreciate you. And then guys, you should know by now this channel does have a Discord server. So if you'd like to join that, you can find that in the video description as well. It's literally going to be the very last link at the bottom of the description. Alrighty, folks, see you soon in the next lesson.